Did the Caleb Williams hype come crashing to a halt? Robin Lumberg, Claudette Montana, and Claudette, Caleb Williams, everyone's been talking about him, and you know, next Patrick Mahomes and all those things, but did not play well against Notre Dame. Three interceptions in that game in a performance that, to some, was alarming. So, did that hurt his stock? You're crazy if you think that Caleb Williams is still not one of the best players in college football. Yes, did he have a bad game against Notre Dame? A defense, by the way, that played really well. Yeah, he threw three interceptions in that game, very uncharacteristic of him, but you gotta look at his resume as a whole, and his resume is fantastic. Um, do I think that other quarterbacks, you know, among college football separate themselves in terms of being front runners in the Heisman race after this week? Yeah, and, and Michael Penix Jr., I'm looking at you, but do I think that Caleb Williams is any less of a spectacular football player after this week? No, I don't. Yeah, you can't wildly overreact like that. I'm with you there. But here's the thing. I never thought that Caleb Williams, there was such a gap between him and the other possible pro prospects currently playing in college football, whether that be Shador Sanders when he comes out, Drake May, who's played really, really well, Michael Penix Jr., who's elevating himself into those conversations uh, as we're talking about him right now. So that is more my takeaway is it's not Caleb Williams and everybody else, there's a group of really good quarterbacks that Caleb Williams is a part of. Still my QB1, Robin, still my QB1. Let's uh, talk about another team in the Pac-12 Conference, the Washington Huskies. They beat the Oregon Ducks, a very close game there. It came down to the final stretch. Final score was 36 to 33. Michael Penix Jr. played lights out. Is he the new front runner in the Heisman race? I think he has to be, he has to be. When you look at the, the points that Washington put on the board, in addition to what he's accomplished statistically, thrown for at least 300 yards in every game this season, and then you get the signature win over Oregon, who have had some big wins themselves this season. We've seen them in the spotlight. I think you you, you mix those things up, and you have the, the recipe for the current Heisman frontrunner. I mean, he separated himself after that Oregon win. He executed, especially in that final stretch, when it really mattered the most and the stakes were so high. And that's some emotional rivalry. I grew up in Seattle. I know, uh, you know, I know that dynamic and that game very, very well. But let's just take a look at some of the statistics also with Michael Penix Jr. He ranks number two in QBR in the nation right now, right behind J.J. McCarthy. Number one in passing yards per game. Number two for total offense. He should be everybody's front runner right now for the Heisen race, especially after Caleb Williams' performance this past weekend. Can't you say it? <laughs> you know, we, 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 I referenced Oregon a second ago. One of those big wins was the, the huge beatdown of Colorado. Colorado looked like they were on the giving end of a beatdown, but instead Stanford storms back to upset Coach Prime and company. Afterwards, Dion was all out of sorts. He was made fun of on SNL. We, we got video of, of fans crying. Should Colorado be mocked for the loss? This SNL skit was spectacular. I've watched it like three times already. I'm never gonna advocate for someone to mock somebody because I like to think that I'm a nice person. But you know, when you're up 29 points at the half and then you blow the lead to Stanford, who's honestly not a great team, People are going to make fun of you. Also, Shador Sanders and Deion Sanders, anything that they say becomes a headline. So they're kind of easy clickbait and they're easy to make fun of, honestly. Yeah, look, everybody catches jokes. I have no problem with that, you know, Twitter and, and what have you right after the fact. In the grand scheme of things, should they be mocked? No, because they've done what they've done is reset the expectations in season. This was a team that won one game a year ago. Now they're on the way to becoming a powerhouse program. They're not there yet, so it really shouldn't be unexpected that they would have some bumps in the road in Boulder. Yeah, to close this out, I don't know how else to do this besides just giving you the, the shitty one. Don't watch the second half. <laughs>